I'm pleased to say I've got some great news. It's Miles, joined by Stu Bennett. You know him better as Wade Barrett, London Town. You're here with Inside the Ropes. How does it feel to be travelling up and down the UK again? It's pretty cool. It's been a while for me. I've kind of been sunning myself in Tampa where I live. I've been doing a, a couple of things here and there. But life on the road is something that I kind of missed. And uh, I just had a shower earlier and I didn't bring a towel with me. So I had to get all the hand paper towels and from the bathroom and use them to dry myself. So yeah, I'm back. I'm back on the road. There we go. That's the glamour of were, life. Were you always an unorganized traveler? Or? You know, I, I feel that I'm, I'm a very organized traveler. I've been doing it for so long that I'm completely organized. It's just nobody brings a towel on the road. Because you bring a towel on the road, use it once, it's soaking wet and it's in your yeah. bag the whole time. So I kind of hope when I turn up in a dressing room, there's a towel there for me. And if there's not, then I, I do what I can. So yeah, I would never pack a towel on Inside the road. Inside the ropes, get the towels there in. There you go, the man blame Kenny. To, the man never coming towel. back, Kenny. Kenny, towels, get on it. <laughs> the night with you tonight. It's been, what, 300 and... 80 days or something since you've left? Something like just over a year since yeah. I left. So just after WrestleMania last, last year, I left. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You're roughly right there. Yeah, well, yeah. You, you, you actually figure that out. 380 might be exactly it was right. April That's... 4th, 2016. Okay. I was okay. there. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, we did Cork yesterday, and today yes. we're in London. This is day two. So yesterday, Kenny went through things chronologically, really through my career about you know how I got my start, and you know the Nexus and developmental and the core and Bad News Barrett and League of Nations and all that stuff. So we kind of go through chronologically, bring out some stories, see what turns up. And I think the exciting thing for me is that really I think every night is going to be completely different so you know whatever story pops in my head about a certain time oh that reminds me of that time that The Undertaker did this or uh, you know Vince did this or, or whatever it is you know so we'll bring out some stories and um, kind of the exciting part for me is I don't know how this night's going to go either so, so no script it just, there's, there's no script at all we'll yeah. just see how it flows and if there's a particular story that the fans are, are liking we'll maybe continue on that but uh, if not we'll move on very rapidly and, uh, and bring it out of the one so well, there's plenty of stuff to talk about you have seen a script to two in the last 12 months uh, have, did a yeah. bit of movie work how, how did it go yeah I really enjoyed it so I've done four movies in total now I did uh, a couple while I was with WWE and uh, since I left I've done two I did um one called Vengeance, which was one where I was playing the the lead in the kind of an action type movie, and um, I was the the good guy for once in my life, which was an interesting experience, and and that should be coming out around September or October this year. Uh, I also did one where I played a Russian vampire killer, uh, which a Russian prisoner vampire killer who well, I mean it was fantastic it was a lot of fun completely out of my normal realm so uh, that's called Fanged Up and again that's probably going to be out around August I think so, look out for uh, those too definitely I'll keep you posted good. on my social media yeah, about those things but see them, yeah. excited for them to come out yeah and did you set any goals did you have any in mind when you left at WWE did you set because I mean there's a lot of guys that you're good friends with Cody Rhodes and, and he definitely you saw the tweet he actually tweeted out a list of things a bucket list that he wanted to achieve after he, he, he left the business. So what did you have set? I really didn't set goals like that. In my opinion, I was unhappy with the way things were going with WWE and it wasn't a case of, oh, well, I've got this better option that I want to go and do. It was simply that I'm not happy doing what I'm doing here. You know what? I'm going to go and work on things that that will come up when I leave WWE, like these movies, for example. I couldn't have done them if I was with WWE, I wouldn't have had the time to do them. Or this speaking tour that I'm doing now, which is another thing that I could never have done if I was with WWE. Or even working on my personal life. You know, there's been plenty of developments and changes in my personal life over the last 12 months, which I don't really talk about my personal life too much in, in interviews and stuff, but there's stuff that I've put on hold for nine years by virtue of the fact that 95% of my life was being taken up by WWE and the travels and, and life on the road and stuff like that. So I was missing out on things in my personal life, which I've now worked on and, and improved and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I didn't have a goal like Cody at all. Um, I was really going with the flow and seeing what takes me. So yeah, I mean, you talk, fun. you talk about your personal life, um, you know, family first, of course, with the, the WWE family, who do you still keep in touch with? Uh, I speak to a bunch of the guys who are still on the road, like Cesaro. I speak to a lot. Um, Sheamus, um, and again, a lot of the guys who've left, like Del Rio, I speak to a lot. Uh, Ryback, I'm very close with. Cody's another one. Um, and then some people behind the scenes in WWE, too, that I'm still in touch with in, in managerial positions, or some of the crew guys who never get the, the spotlight shone on them. The you unsung know, the, heroes. Exactly. Yeah. The guys who put the stage together, or the cameramen, and stuff like that. So there's, there's plenty of people I speak to still up there. So it's good to have that kind of relationship with a lot of people still, because, like I say, I worked there nine years, so... There's a lot of friendships that have been been built up over that time. And how much did you miss just having your own schedule and your own diary every week? You know, that, that, it's it's something that the fans don't think about. Exactly. I mean, we see the, you on TV twice a week or three times three times a week, depending if it's a pay per view or not. 
and then we just think, oh, that's it, back to Yeah, the yeah, I wish, it, I wish it was that easy just to be on for the, the eight or ten minute match or whatever it is you have and the, the process in getting to the arena and putting the match together and then getting in your rental car and driving 300 miles to the next show, which isn't televised and all the the travel around the world that we do and the media work. There is so much stuff that goes into that 1% of our life, which is the the actual on TV match. So it's great that I have that downtime now and have a bit of relaxation built in. I've got the opportunity to go on holiday or come spend Christmas with my family. I spent my first Christmas with my family this year, first time in 10 years, um, because prior to that I was constantly working and, and with WWE during that period. So... Like I said, there was stuff in my personal life that I wasn't going to do. Um, so the opportunity to do that now on a different schedule is is very beneficial. And talk me through, I mean, I'm not familiar with how bookings and such work with the, the independent circuit. I mean, do you just give them a, a window about, you know, of, of when you're willing to work and they just go, all right, we'll fill you in here, fill you in here? Or, or is, it, is it that flexible? No, it's, um, well, but I could do that. Um, I'm not actively seeking too much work, to be honest with you. Like I say, I'm, I've quite enjoyed taking my foot off the gas so I didn't leave WWE to go and get a packed schedule on the indies because mm -hmm. if I wanted a packed schedule I'd have stayed with WWE in the first place so um, for me it's been a case of cherry picking the stuff that excites me be it WrestleCon or um, or doing this speaking tour with Inside the Ropes or I've got some commentary coming up with uh, What Culture Pro Wrestling which I'm very excited about so there's certain things that will come in that I'm like you know what I really like the sound of that I'll, I'll give that a shot and a lot of stuff will come in and I'm like you know what that's not really appealing to me right now thank you for the offer but we're going to turn it down so I'd say 99% of the stuff that's come in through my, my well I have an acting agent and a wrestling agent 99% of it gets turned down but the stuff that is really exciting like this is the stuff I'll take so that's kind of where I'm at right now shoot thanks very much it's, Thank it's you, been Mars. great to meet you and, Pleasure. and great to speak to you we look forward to the, uh, the Q&A tonight and, and the night hosted by you no pressure enjoy thank it. you very much it'll be a lot of fun for the standard wrestler like me 5% of that shirt sale goes to me 95% goes to the company to pay for manufacturing costs and marketing and obviously their profits too so I get 5% of that shirt sale so if a a t-shirt costs $20 I get $1 of it I think my maths is right there yeah it is $1 didn't embarrass myself um, so that that's how it works now someone like a John Cena because he's been there a long time and he's a merch machine he sells more t-shirts than anyone else in the company he's managed to negotiate a higher percentage. I don't know what his percentage is, but I know it's not 5%, it's a lot higher than that. So he gets a, a much bigger cut of his merch. Now, the problem with the Nexus shirts were they were massive sellers, but they weren't, it wasn't 5% of every shirt going to me, it was that 5% was then split seven ways between myself and all the other guys that were in Nexus. And for John to have joined Nexus, he would then have had to, to cut his profits from Nexus shirt sales, which he would have then been incorporated into with seven other guys. So he didn't want to do it from his perspective, um, and he still wanted to sell his own shirts and get his own cut of his shirt sales, which would have been taken a hit if he wasn't wearing it anymore. So my understanding of why he was never putting the shirt on was because they couldn't agree merch numbers. Now, I will say I never got that story from John. That came from other people. Um, but that was my understanding of why John would never put the shirt on. Eventually, he put it on for, I think, one show, and, and that was it. But it's nice to see that people in this room have contributed a dollar to your your, your nice suit that you to have. My, to my retirement fund. 